I think we can all agree that this year, the US presidential election is an unprecedented shit show. But did you know that even before, in fact forever, there were some small differences or not so small differences that caused the French to, well, basically judge you, you know. We've been silently or not so silently judging you for years about the ways that you guys run your presidential elections. And in fact, I have found a total of 10 differences between the French presidential elections and the US presidential elections, which causes us to raise our eyebrows or roll our eyes or be like just, but, but why? Why are you even doing things this way? My name is Angèle Preto, I am the French learning coach and on this channel I help you learn French, become bilingual and understand the cultural differences between France and the English speaking countries, particularly the USA. And today we are looking at 10 things the French despise about the US elections. Starting with number one, perhaps the biggest of all, private funding. In France, it is literally illegal to accept private money to fund your political campaign as a candidate to the presidency. In fact, some of the biggest scandals around President Nicolas Sarkozy are centered around the suspicion that he did accept private funding, uh, in particular from the boss of L'Oréal, Liliane Betancourt, and from the former Libyan dictator, Gaddafi. You are not allowed to do that. Whether it's foreign money or private money from your own country, it's completely illegal in France. We just cannot do that. And it seems that in the US, the elections could just not run without private funding. Private funding is a big part of the US elections. So you might be wondering, okay, but if they don't accept private funding, how do they even fund their campaigns? Like they don't do it out of pocket, right? No, they don't. So in France, we have a system. Each candidate which receives at least 5% of the votes will get their expenses refunded after the election by the French state. So that's how this works. Of course, it makes it really important to have at least 5% of the votes. Otherwise, well, you're out of luck. You've basically paid everything out of pocket for no result, not even a nice score. And this brings me to number two on this list, which is bipartisanism or the fact of having just two parties. Now you might tell me, okay, but we do have a third party candidate in the US. And that's true, you do have a third party candidate, but for starters, you only have three, which is not a lot. In French, the biggest number of candidates I've seen in a presidential election is 17, which is huge and kind of insane. And that actually, at this point, we start having problems because we have too many candidates. But for us, the fact that you have only two or two plus a third one, which doesn't change, stand a chance anyway, we do perceive this as a bit anti-democratic. We don't, we cannot imagine that you have enough of a political representation of all the political ideas that can be with only two political parties or two candidates and you know a third one. Like I said, we once had 17. It's very common to have 11 of them. So that's a big, big difference between France and the US. So with these many parties, what we have is we have a lot of different political ideas which are represented in the presidential election. And that brings me to number three, which is something that the French have been silently judging you about for years. And in fact, even when I was a child, that was already being discussed. In the US, at least from the point of view of the French, you don't really have a left-wing party. When I was a child, my uncle explained US politics to me in this way. He said, in France, we have the right and the left. That was true at the time. Now it's not so true. The, the, the political landscape has changed since then. But at the time, we really had a very strong socialist party and a very strong, um, more Republican party. Um, so he told me in France, you have the right and the left. And in the US, you have two parties, but they are both the right. And that's very much how us French look at the US politics. We do perceive the Democrats to be a bit far to the right in comparison to what our political landscape looks like. Nowadays, of course, it's a little bit different because President Macron has very much uh, the kind of ideas that the American Democrats have. So that has changed. But the fact that you don't have anyone really to the left of the Democrat Party uh, is weird for us because we have at least four or five parties to the left of that. Again, because we have a lot more parties than you guys do, or at least a lot more parties which are represented in the elections. Number four is the length of a presidential term. 
So an American president is elected for four years, as you know, and they can be elected twice and that's it. This is something they have in common with the French. And in fact, I actually learned that rather recently. I didn't know before that the French can only have two terms. Generally, after one term, we get rid of a president. And if he gets two terms, he's very lucky. So I guess we just didn't really need to speak about this rule. But I looked it up and yes, it's the same in France. Presidents can only have two terms, but they are elected for five years each time. Which it used to be seven years, which is why President Mitterrand was in office for a total of 14 years. But then during the presidency of Jacques Chirac, there was a referendum asking us, the French, to vote for or against a shortening of the presidential term to five years. And so at the time, one of the, one of the criticism of the idea of having a five years mandate was that it would make the presidential system look closer to that of the US, which we perceive to be not very efficient. And basically, we were afraid that the French president wouldn't have a lot of time to get anything done really in those five years. Eventually, the reform was adopted and nothing has really changed so much in the way the country is run. One thing that has changed is that we don't have we have less of a chance that the president and the prime minister will be from different political parties, which actually makes the running of a country smoother because, of course, you know, it's like in the US when you have the House and the Senate be from different parties, then things get stuck really easily. So in the end, we could say that there isn't a major difference in the duration of the presidential terms. In France, it's five years and in the US, it's four years. But it used to be much more of a difference in the past. Number five, perhaps the thing that we judged you the most, well, I guess after private funding, is this whole weird indirect electoral college system where you can even have a majority of the popular vote go to one candidate, but then the electoral college will still choose another candidate. This is so weird and quirky, we don't understand it. I don't think that most French people even understand how you guys elect your president through the electoral college. It's weird, we just see it as undemocratic. And the fact that it slightly favors the Republican party against the Democrat party is so weird. In France, we just really value who people vote for. We have a direct system and so whoever wins the popular vote is the president, no question. One person, one vote, that's something we see as completely natural and necessary. We just don't understand why anyone would do it differently. Oh, and speaking of the way that the president is elected, how the vote works, we also find it interesting that you guys only have one round. In France, we have two rounds of voting. So in the first round, we have the however many candidates have you know run for the election. In order to run for the presidency, you have to collect 500 endorsements from a uh, important people. Those are the mayors, the senators, uh, the deputies, and these kind of people. If you collect 500 of those people's endorsement, then congratulations, you're in, you can run in the first round of the French presidential election. And that might happen that many, many people actually get through. Like the longest, uh, in 2002, we had 17. In the last election, we had 11, if I remember correctly. So we have all of these people that we can vote for. And we vote once in the first round. And then after the first round, we count all the votes. And the first two people, the two people who have got the most votes in the first round, go on to the second round. And then we vote again. And whoever is elected in those two rounds between those two people becomes the French president. Like our system more, we just don't understand why you guys would use an electoral, an electoral college to do what we could just do ourselves. Number six, and a thing that probably not many French people know about, but when I found out, I was shocked. And I'm not the only one, because I know many people in the US are just shocked by that as well, but gerrymandering. Like, really, some people just cut away the map in this weird shape with the sake of favoring a party over the other, because depending on how the voters vote, that's just so extremely weird. And once again, it couldn't even happen in the French system because in the French system, one person, one vote, and we just count them all. And whoever gets the most vote is the president. We do have some elections like the elections for the parliament, which are based on geographical zones. So I cannot say for 100% that there is no such thing at all as gerrymandering in France, but I've never heard of that. And I think it would be really bizarre. And if the French would gerrymander their zones, I would also judge them. Number seven, a thing that is super weird that I also don't understand is that you guys always vote on a Tuesday. Why? <laughs> why Tuesday? Like there's no, there, I can't think of a single reason why you guys would vote on a Tuesday. If you know why you vote on a Tuesday or if, you, if you're not American, but you know why the Americans vote on a Tuesday, 
Tell me in the comment down below because I have no idea. It's got to be some hysterical, historical, not hysterical, but hysterical would be fun too. Historical reason why the American people vote on Tuesdays. The French always vote on a Sunday. I haven't found exactly the reason why, but generally it's admitted that we vote on a Sunday because people typically don't work on Sundays and then that allows them to have more time to go and vote. In the US, not only you vote on a Tuesday, but there isn't even a law that says that the uh, employers of people are, are required to let their employees go and vote if they work on the day of the vote. Which is, it makes this extremely complex system where uh, of course you can vote ahead of time and you can vote per post and that's great because honestly if everyone had to vote on the, that Tuesday that would probably be really complicated for you guys. But yeah then again we don't really understand it because we don't really do any of that. Like there's a little of voting per post but it's very rare, almost nobody uses it. And we just go vote on a Sunday and that's it. Number eight. And this is beyond the context of the election. This is just pertains to the French culture versus the US culture in general, but race-based statistics. Honestly, I see the point and I see why it's useful to be able to know the opinions of black people as opposed to white people or the opinions of Hispanic people. Like I see the benefits. I see how you guys gain a wealth of data from having those statistics, but it's still something the French despise you for because we just think you're racist. That's the French idea. Yeah, the Americans are just racist and the French are not because in French we don't see race. Like in France, we don't see race. We are just colorblind to like the most ultimate extent. We can't make statistics about race. We can't write anything about race. And we even try not to mention someone's race. Like I've said race so much in this video. If a French person stumble upon that, they're probably going to call me a racist in the comment. And I mean, I'm ready for it uh, because it's just a topic that I've been thinking about a lot. And in France, we just don't have a way of addressing racism because of the very strong mindset that everyone is equal. And this like universalism is one of the main French values. We just feel that everyone is equal and we refuse to see the fact that people are actually treated unequally in reality. And if someone actually sees this fact in their country, then that's got to be their country's problem because we cannot be having this problem because we're French and universalism is important and we don't see anyone different from anyone else based on the color of the skin. And yeah, the French still despise you for that, but honestly, I don't because I can see the point of having those statistics. I can see how they're really helpful. And if we had them in France, maybe it would be a little bit easier to see the flows in our own culture. But still, the French thinks you're racist and they judge you. Number nine those voting machines of yours. They're so weird. Like, I don't even get how that works. Like in France, we have a paper with the name of the candidate. We put that paper in an envelope and we put the envelope in a voting ballot or whatever you call that. And that's it. That's the voting. The fact that you have those like pre-printed with like different names and you have to put them in a machine and whatever. I don't even know how you do that. You have to write things on in France, if you write something on your voting ballot, your voting ballot will be invalidated. Like, end of it. You, you have to take the ballot, which is pre-printed, put it with no alteration in the envelope, and boom, you're done. And so, yeah, I know that many countries do that differently. In fact, I recently voted in Austria for the very first time. Woohoo, I'm so proud. Um, and in Austria, we had to put a cross on, on the on the voting ballot next to the party that we wanted to vote for. That's not something you can do in France. This is just a completely different system. And finally, number 10, something I didn't know until I voted in Austria and someone gave me feedback about that. But in Austria, just like in the US, there are no information about political parties at the voting station. Like you go to your place where you have to vote, you have no information whatsoever about the political parties. And if you would, that would be seen as propaganda. So basically in Austria, like in the US, you're allowed to do propaganda everywhere except at the voting station. So in France, how this works is that in front of every voting station, we have posters which are exactly the same size. They are like standardized posters and we have one for each candidate and each candidate gets to print, put their poster. Actually, I think probably this is done by the, uh, this is probably done by the government official. So each candidate gets to put a poster, just one, of themselves and they're all the same size. So we have the standardized uh, pre-existing piece of hardware where the candidate gets to post 
uh, where one candidate, well, blah. So we have this standardized pre-existing piece of hardware and we have one per candidate and then the information of each candidate is printed on one of those pieces of hardware. And the order in which the pieces of hardware are, are laid out for each candidate is pulled out randomly. So there's no such thing as like the biggest candidate before or whatever, it's just random order. And they're also not in order of their ideas, like not the, all the lefties together, the righties together, no, just random order. So of course that helps knowing who are all the candidates if you have 17 candidates, it's really helpful because 17 candidates, come on. Like some people might come to vote on the Sunday of the vote, not knowing about every single candidate and what they stand for. So for us, it looks like we have a, more of a chance to make an idea, an opinion. For us, it feels more democratic because we get a chance to make, uh, to make our own ideas of the candidates with seeing them each in the same amount of space which of course in real life in the media is not like that. You have a lot of candidates that you see more, you have candidates that you see a lot more than others, but the day you come to the voting station, we have informations about the candidate and there is the same amount of information about exactly each candidate. So I was impressed that they don't do that here in Austria. And I was also impressed that people told me, I was also impressed that some of you told me in the comments that yes, in the US you actually do the same, you don't have any information about the candidates and you think it's more democratic this way, but we think it's more democratic the other way. So as you can see, there are so many cultural differences between the way the French elect their president and the way the American elect their president. If you enjoyed this video so far, please click the like button and let me know down in the comment which cultural difference was the most outrageous to you and which topic you would like me to speak about in the future in the cultural differences videos. We already have several videos about cultural differences on this channel. So if you'd like to watch more, you can check out this playlist right then. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.